Okay, so we'll go over um, an introduction to the five elements and the five bodies. And then we'll uh, move into a practice where we will be with our uh, five bodies and I'll sort of introduce in your physical space uh, where these uh, elements correspond to and an introduction to some actions that embody that particular element. I call a lot of my classes embody the elements because when we're doing the types of posture practice that we're doing, we're also incorporating breath work or pranayama, and we're also practicing them in the light of what's known as the yamas and niyamas. So we're practicing in a really sensitive and honest way. And <clears throat> we're even moving into some of the more um, inner aspects of yoga where we're learning to sense inwardly. In yoga, it's called pratyahara or inward sensing. So <clears throat> just like Desiree mentioned, this sort of meditation on the chakras, this is the same thing. We're just, it, we're not calling it muladhara, we're calling it earth. We're not calling it svahistasana, we're calling it water. All right, so each one of these correlate to the chakras. And I present it this way because I feel like it's more tangible and it's more understandable. And you can build a real relationship with these elements, right? So <clears throat> we'll talk about the different corresponding bodies. And over the course of the retreat, we'll keep adding and layering on different aspects of each element so your understanding of them becomes a little bit more layered and and then we're starting to think of our posture practice or the time we spend on these you know little rectangles or however you do it wherever you do it as a focused time of practice to be this ritual with the five elements that's happening internally on the inside so that you'll be able to, in a sense, adapt what you do when the more you understand your own elemental nature and the more you understand <clears throat> the qualities of each of these elements. So you, we could go into the specifics and all the details of what Ayurveda says and lists. We could do lots of listing. There's lots of lists in yoga and in Ayurveda also, but <clears throat> My focus is to really help you feel it, to feel inside your body these elements and then start to be able to feel, in a sense, what are the predominant uh, qualities? What are you most like? So your earth body, we'll start there at the foundation, is your actual physical body. So your share of earth, you're uh, made up of the same, same stuff as the earth and we all go back to the earth so it's easy to see how the physical could be the earth body and if we look outside at the qualities of the earth right it's dense and heavy <clears throat> okay and it's also stable so we're when we're embodying earth we're sort of calling in those qualities and you may find that man i'm already dense <laughs> and stable <laughs> guilty, right? <laughs> so you may begin to recognize these qualities in yourself. You may say, you know, you may have caught yourself saying, well, you know, I'm real earthy. Like I just want to be laying on the earth. <laughs> or uh, there's a slow, steady quality to the way that you be, how you are. So your earth body is your physical body. So when we're doing posture practice, we're working with the alignment of our earth body and our physicality. In your body, the area of earth is the pelvic diaphragm, which sometimes is called the pelvic floor, but I call it the pelvic diaphragm. So it starts to build this relationship with how it moves and flexes. Floors are hard 
and they don't move. So we think we need to, you know, make this hard foundation. But, but the pelvic floor moves and responds to your breath, just like we uh, felt in our practice, hopefully, a bit. <clears throat> so from the pelvic floor down through the legs and the feet and the soles of the feet. So the soles of the feet, particularly really important with how you're in contact with the earth. So we'll go over in some specific details how to activate and uh, align and ground your feet because that's the very foundation of everything else that we're going to build on top of that. So it's important that we spend a lot of time with earth. And so too is it with our physical body. It's the foundation that will build whatever relational and spiritual enlightenment we might be striving for also has to be held stable by the foundation of our body because that's where we have to exist and be and do. So earth body. And then there's our water body. So this is our emotional life or our energetic body sometimes also called. So uh, emotions flowing like water. Uh, I like to think of the combination of earth and water like a flowing river. So you make the stable uh, boundaries of your earth so that the emotional waters can flow freely, unobstructed, not like anything but sadness or anything except that anger because nobody likes an angry girl, right? <laughs> so allowing all emotions to flow through your river because they're all very natural and all welcome. So through stabilizing our earth, and working with our sense of rhythm, which is also associated with water, we begin to have this sense of flow in our life where em emotions arise and we may experience a certain emotional wave, some more comfortable than others, and then the wave washes out and we have space to feel something else than that particular feeling over and over and over again. So there's a lot that kind of goes into this idea of, of emotional processing. But as we begin to move our breath in rhythm, as we begin to move our body in rhythm with our breath, <clears throat> we start to uh, have emotions arise. And it's all allowed. It's all allowed to arise and wash through. And this is what allows for us to process you know, what happened this morning and also what happened when uh, we were five and also uh, how this is, you know, uh, similar to that one time when I was 24 and all the things that, that arise in our emotional bodies. So all of those things which we are unwilling to feel dam up our water body, our river that we want to flow smoothly. So both in our physical body, we're hoping to remove obstructions so that we can begin to feel and move uh, in, a, in a way that feels easeful, like a river just doing its thing, flowing. And this is associated with your pelvis and your sacral area. So thinking of any stuckness that you feel in your physical body in that area is also providing you some information about your water body, your emotional body. So there's an, a place in our body for each of these elements. So within our earth body, there is our water body that exists here. And so alignment of the pelvis and the pelvic bowl is really important for balancing your emotional life. So when we balance and stabilize in the pelvis and also have mobility and freedom of movement at the hip joints and all of that comes together, then we're kind of flowing more smoothly. So that's how we can begin to think about working with our water body within our physical posture practices, is how can we free up the pelvis and uh, support the sacrum to hold stable and not shift around. So <clears throat> it can be helpful to even learn a little bit about the anatomy, but we'll be doing that in a unique way where you're learning about your anatomy through feeling your anatomy, not through some externalized visual of a skeleton, but through what it feels like in your body in this area. <clears throat> the fire body is next, and that's your mental body. So it's associated with the area of the abdomen, 
And when we're doing our posture practices, we're working to create a containment through the abdomen so that we're starting to build this inner heat. So you could think of working with the fire element very much like working with the fire element externally. So if you're going to build a fire, you have to have a stable earth to put it on and you want it to be just the right amount of not too dry and not too wet to uh, stabilize the fire. And then you build however you're going to, uh, <clears throat> you know, whatever you're going to burn, let's say papers and sticks and logs. And you arrange that with the right amount of space so that air can get in. So working with both the area above and below that fire to make sure it has all of the uh, <clears throat> qualities present for that fire to spark and then thrive. And so too it is with our abdomen. So <clears throat> if you say have a tendency when you're feeling a particular something to be like, I know what's gonna solve this, donuts. Donuts and milk, maybe a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> and you're, you know, trying to put down and dampen that fire. That's a tendency that I have. I feel an intense feeling, maybe anger, maybe starting to notice the theme here, offering myself in that way. Uh, and it's much safer for me to suppress that and push it down and to, put, to dampen that fire than it is to flame up <laughs> and, and suffer the consequences of whatever might happen from that. So, as we're working with fire, we're working with our mind. And so by providing this containment and taking what's called a banda, which is what we'll learn in class today, you're learning to create a good home for this fire so that it can burn long and bright and put off a nice warming heat uh, rather than sort of being volatile, which fire can have the tendency to, to be, or all consuming, which fire can have the tendency to be. So. We're thinking about the qualities of fire. We're wanting to create a contained, warming uh, heat in our abdomen. And we'll do that through how we contain our body. And then moving to the air element, which resides at the heart and is associated with your intuitive body or your wisdom, inner wisdom, inner knowing. So uh, the air body tells us that there is a wisdom that comes from the inside. And when we close down on that wisdom and don't experience what we know here at our heart, we begin to collapse in other areas in our physical body as well. So for the air element to thrive, we want to broaden and lengthen through the chest and expand and take up the space that is, you know, rightfully ours to exist in and uh, assert what we know, even if it's only because we know it. And so connecting to your chest and your heart and the, all of this area helps connect you to your inner wisdom and your intuitive body. And then finally the space element at the throat and your relational body. So you can uh, <clears throat> Think of the alignment that happens in the neck and the throat, part of the work that we'll do for Banda, to be a support for creating proper space between the vertebra of your spine. So let's say maybe there's a, a tendency to always be forward and in the future and TCB in, we'll call it, and this future orientation. You can see that start to develop uh, in the way that the head and neck is postured. And so to center ourselves and be present, it's important that we have our head aligned on top of our shoulders. So our cervical spine aligned on top of our thoracic spine, which is on top of our lumbar spine. So through the alignment of the spine, we're sort of installing this wisdom of the chakras into our body. So they, they, there's teachings that say that they might not already be there. You might have to build them inside of yourself through your attention and your awareness. So we're going to be building a relationship with each of these elements through how we're posturing and how we're moving. So you could think about the spine compressed with not right spacing over time starts to lead to wear and tear between the vertebra. 
And so too with relation, relationship. Not proper spacing starts to create too much friction in certain areas and then pff, injury. Sometimes irreversible injury happens. So by holding right relationship with our own self in, an, in our own spine, we become much more able to recognize and be in right relationship than with other nervous systems and other creatures and beings that have you know, their own experiences. So through aligning our spine and building relationships with these elements, we're aligning and coming into contact with all of these different aspects of what it means to be a, a human. And in the model that we're taking this from, which is uh, called the model of the koshas, tells us that the more subtle informs the gross, which we could experience through uh, a death in the family or some relational injury, a divorce, something where there's nothing physically that has happened to you, but you're taken out totally. And you can feel it in your physical body, the heaviness and the denseness of grief and pain from relational uh, interactions. So through coming into conscious relationship with each of the elements, you can start to think of which areas of your life, which of your bodies could use additional attention. So you could say, you know, maybe you're someone who spends lots of time doing exercises and um, your body is really well and stable, uh, but you spend, you know, six hours at the gym and you can do any kind of back bend you want but all your relationships are crap <laughs> and you're unable to compromise and unable to stay in relationships with people that you want to stay in relationships. They fracture and they break. That is an imbalance. That means that maybe in, you, in all your earthing, in all your physical exercises, you could add more components of space. And so that could mean a lot of things and we'll start to layer on a deeper understanding of the techniques that you can do to bring balance to each of the different elemental uh, bodies that we all have. So this is in yoga therapy what I'm supporting folks to do. I'm, I'm saying like, let's do a check-in with all of your bodies. How, how is your intuitive body? There's a way that I could make an assessment through the physical body, but then there's also information that only you could have about ways that you are denying your own inner knowing, ways that you have an intuition about something that you should do, but you don't do. You clamp down and compress around it so that you just, you know, hold it and uh, keep going along with what you feel like you might should do. So the deeper that you start to, uh, notice and attend and meditate on these elements, both in your formal practice and in your life, the more sort of, of a, a real relationship you'll have with them. And it's an actual way that you can start balancing your internal bodies. Say there's, you realize there's an imbalance in your water body. Well, how could you spend more time with water and study its qualities and watch how it flows and moves? and maybe add water to your altar space to, to bring the energy in of the actual water element. So after this practice, we'll go for a walk and we'll be with all of our element friends and uh, I'll invite you to meditate on them as we move out into nature also. So coming in contact with them and after practice, we'll have an opportunity to speak to or, or uh, share about or um, journal about which one of your elemental bodies could use more attention. And then on our walk, we'll think about how could you notice and, and bring to your conscious mind, what's up with that element? What do I notice about the qualities of air and how it's impacting me? <clears throat> These also have a sense or, uh, associated with them. And throughout the practice, as we're going through each one, I'll layer your attention to move towards that particular element, sense. So when we're talking about earth, 
you'll be focused on smell. When we're talking about air, you'll be fo focused on touch. And that's another way that you can start to bring in relationship with each of these elements. So <clears throat> does anyone have any questions about that before we move into practice? So as I'm teaching, I'm, I'm uh, you know, in this class, I'm saying, all right, we're doing earth things. And then we're doing water things and fire things and air things so that you guys, because we have a longer period of time together, can start to uh, build uh, a feeling, a felt sense of those elements. But oftentimes I'm mixing them together. I'm kind of creating this uh, alchemical experience with the, the different cues that I'm using, with the different uh, uh, the tone of my voice and the qualities that I'm bringing your attention to embody. So that's how th this physical practice can become this ritual relationship with the five elements. So we often think of, you know, at least I did, and many of the rituals that I did uh, when I first started getting into ritual and ceremony and those sorts of things were, you know, very particular uh, sequences of events say for a fire offering where we give these very specific ingredients in this very specific way with these very specific mantras with this very specific mudra and everything is given uh, very close attention and in a similar way we're building that type of fire relationship with your internal fire so we're creating all these very specific uh, conditions so that the fire can thrive and burn bright and and process and digest all of the food and life experience that we eat on a daily basis so let's stop talking and do